Good morning, happy cooking, good afternoon, and in case I don't see you because you're in a different part of the world, good evening. I trust you're having an amazing day today. So my recipe for you today and your salad master cookware, we're going to be using the uh, five quart roaster. I'm gonna make this amazingly delicious, the best ever. Um, lentil soup, super easy to make. All you have to do is have your lentils cooked, which is already 20 minutes. You can actually start it from scratch, but because uh, sometimes it becomes too dense, I mean, like putting the, the, the dry lentils in here and add the water and then add all the, the ingredients, but that's not how I'm gonna do it today. How I'm gonna do it today is my lentils are already cooked. These are the little tiny beluga type of lentils, which I absolutely love. So this dish will be 100% vegan and 100% unbelievably delicious. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna preheat the five quart roaster. So start it at about medium low. Why? Because I want to heat up the pan and not the oil. So speaking of which, we're gonna use coconut oil, which I absolutely love because it is antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. I absolutely adore coconut oil, and I'll keep on telling people about it because truly, um, I used to use coconut oil all the time, and then I decided to start being a little bit more gourmet because I didn't want all my food to taste like coconut oil, but as a result, I gained over 20 pounds. And so I decided one day, you know, what was working for me because I don't really exercise, I live in pain all the time. And so I decided that, okay, I need to go back to what I was doing before. So just like you know, success leaves clues and so does failure. So I failed to realize that the, the combination of olive oil and grapeseed oil and a lot of butter and all kinds of things, I was really putting a lot of weight. I wasn't eating a lot, but I was putting the weight. And so I thought, well, I remember when I was eating only with coconut oil, I was slimming down. And so I decided to try it again. And lo and behold, I shed 20 pounds. You can't even tell, probably not. Anyway, so let's start with the, um, the red onion. So we're gonna do like a dry fry first. Um, and so I'm gonna chop up, you can use onions, red onions, white onions, you can use, uh, um, uh, shallots if you like you know so the idea is to add a lot of allium in your diet which comes from onions green onions and also the garlic garlic is the most powerful antibacterial um, and antiviral and it's like to me is my is the replacement to penicillin since I'm allergic to it but don't quote me on that because I can only vouch for me not for anyone else Okay, but uh, garlic is very important and many studies have been done on garlic and the many benefits of it. So I encourage you in this time that you have everybody, pretty much everybody in the world has a lot of time. I encourage you to go out there and start researching the health benefits of garlic. Uh, my philosophy is garlic is a very hot substance, so I don't have it. In the winter, in the summertime, I only have it in the winter time. I don't, I don't bother eat it too much in the summertime because it's too hot for, for our system. Uh, not to say that if I'm making spaghetti, of course I still do it. But when I mean garlic in the winter time, I'm talking about eating raw garlic, which controls parasites. Eating uh, raw garlic if you have a really bad flu. It's really, really important. So, you know, you don't have to have it raw, but raw is the very best um, bioavailability of the nutrients and the, and the substances, compounds in the garlic. So let's um, add a little bit of garlic. So I have uh, five cloves of garlic. And uh, I also, I'm, you know, I'm, I love anything hot because it helps open the artery walls, which, you know, some people might not like the spicy, but you know, I, I don't like healthy foods, but I still eat them. I don't like a lot of stuff, but I still eat them because they're good for me. I mean, I do a balanced combination of everything. You know, I, I don't go to just, I don't subscribe, I would say, to just one method of, 
of gaining your health. I like to I like to be flexible. Hence my name, the flexitarian. I absolutely adore my lifestyle because really I don't miss out on anything. I eat everything that was put on the earth, um, except animals, that much. But everything that, you know, in terms of plants, I love plants, all kinds of plant-based foods. So I'm always looking, you know, for ways to invent something delicious, something nutritious, something that everybody can eat and be satisfied with it. So we have, uh, like I say, five cloves of garlic. Now let's turn the heat to medium medium high because we're going to um i'm going to add these last because otherwise i'll be coughing all day long it's really strong this is the habanero i absolutely love habaneros the the fact that i talk about habaneros and it makes me want to like oh it's hot so anyway so some of the ingredients that we're going to roast first because i like this soup when it's roasted you can use, uh, I'm gonna use two Yukon Gold potatoes, white potatoes work. I like the gold because they're very sweet, very delicious. Couple carrots, some I'm adding like, um, like a red carrot and a yellow carrot. And of course, a lot of cilantro because the cilantro is just amazing. It chelates heavy metals from your brain. It's, it's, it, it's, uh, it fights salmonella, so put it on your salad because you never know, right, people? pick these vegetables and they're not necessarily, uh, you know, using a lot of sanitary uh, ways to harvest the food. You know, you can only make sure that your food is um, properly taken care of when you personally grow it yourself. By the way, most of the time I put the skin on, on, on all the vegetables because 40 to 60 percent of the goodness is found in the skin of the vegetable. So whenever we peel the skin, uh, we're basically peeling away about 40% of the nutrients in there. So it's up to you. You don't have to put it. You can peel it. What I do is I wash it really good with soap and then rinse it and I scrub it with a little scrubby as well. So uh, if you feel that, that you should, and, and these are organic too as well, so if you feel that you should peel them, go ahead, don't be afraid, okay? So I'm going to lower the heat because, because I'm starting to see if the, the onion is caramelizing and it's smelling incredibly amazing. To tell you the truth, I love the smell of onions. I think uh, even when I go past like the store or when, when I go to a, a concert and I smell those onions, I swear my husband's always talked me out of it and I'm going like, oh, I wish I could have like that street food, but he won't let me. So which is good, it's fine, you know, it just smells delicious. So I'm one that I like to smell things. I like to see things because, you know, colors, it's what attracts us to the food that we want to eat. But speaking of colors, colors are the vitamins and the flavors are the minerals. So if you lose the, the flavor of the food, then you are missing out on the minerals of the food. So make sure that you eat a lot of colors every day. Same thing with carrots. I just scrub them. You know, these were in the dirt at some point. So scrub them really good, even though they already come scrubbed from wherever they were harvested. But um, it doesn't matter if they're organic. Always wash them. Always wash all your vegetables. So many outbreaks of salmonella. You know, sometimes it's because at home we don't follow, you know, some people don't follow uh, sanitary practices. Hotels and restaurants, of course, they have to follow certain guidelines. But still, I noticed that from people that I have hired to come and cook at Happy Cooking, I noticed that they weren't washing the lettuce and the vegetables. Like, why are you not doing that? And they say, oh, well, they're already washed. But you have to understand, when they're washed, when they're harvested, they're washed with uh, reclaimed water. They're not washed with uh, the still water or acid water or some kind of what I call clean water. Okay, so, so, so far we have not added any, any oil yet. So now that I'm almost done cutting this up, um, you can use, you can, uh, uh, 
turn up the heat a little bit more so we start roasting. So what I'll do is I'm going to get a new spoon because I used the spoon that I was gonna use the coconut oil. This is very important, you know, yesterday I cooked for four hours and I'm very proud of myself because, you know, I didn't know the recipes. I didn't know what I was gonna cook. It was a total ad hoc and I had to go find things because it's a challenge for me as like, Many parents, like I say, sometimes they stand in front of the refrigerator thinking, what am I going to cook today? And I figure, you know, I'm going to do the same thing. What am I going to cook today? I was going to cook only oats. I was going to, and then I thought, maybe a surf and turf, maybe a, a vegan. And all of a sudden I thought, maybe why don't I just challenge myself to do like as much, as many recipes as I can for the day and see where it goes. But if it wasn't for... Uh, the network that shut me down after four hours, I would have been cooking for at least eight. And by the way, I was eight hours in the kitchen because it took me four hours to cook, but it also took me four hours to clean all the... the oh, I did it again. It took me four hours to clean, but my clean was my kitchen was spotless afterwards. So I'm gonna use uh, two tablespoons of coconut oil. And so I don't dirty the spoon, so I just push the, 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 the oil. And so you see now I'm roasting the vegetables. This is gonna be a really amazing soup. I absolutely adore this soup. I've made it a few times. Because it's not, it's not just the lentils, but it's also a lot of vegetables in there. And you might ask why am I not using the salam as the machine? Because sometimes I just like to have the little squares and the machine doesn't cut the little squares like I like them. Um, it doesn't matter even if you cook this for a long time, you're not gonna overcook. You're always gonna have that density. You're gonna have that delicious taste of the vegetables. You know, for me, it's all about, you know, having Texture. Everything has to have some kind of texture. I don't like things that are bland, mushy. You know, I I cook to my liking. I, I don't take after anybody. In fact, I was a really bad cook. I didn't know how to cook. And I didn't know how to cook even if, if my life depended on it. Um, but I learn on my own from the food that I like. I travel a lot. I've been to so many countries in the world. I've tasted the foods in Europe. I've tasted the foods in Latin America. I've, I've traveled through the U.S. and the islands. And I love food. I love food. So um, as I tasted the food, I think I was given with a talent that I can, I can tell what's in the food. And so when I got home, I always taste, I make something from my memory, from what I remember, what it, it tastes, but I use just the ingredients that I have at home. And so that's been working for me forever. I have over 200 videos that I created, and I created as a service to people, you know, especially our salon master owners that love to get new ideas. So this recipe is not for you to follow to the T. It's for you to give you, for me to give you an idea of what you can do and you can add to it, you can take out. It's totally up to you, okay? So this is the, the, the habanero pepper, which I absolutely adore. I absolutely love. Um, so you notice the handles don't get hot and I normally don't use the handles unless I'm going to remove uh, the pan like right now. Okay, the next thing that we're going to add is some oregano. Whenever you add dried herbs, always rub them in your hands, especially bare hands. If you cook it for your family, and this is not a restaurant, by the way, this is my home. So for those people that sometimes attack me and say mean things on my videos, you know, I said to you, you know, be kind, be kind, be loving, you know, because you attract more bees with honey than with vinegar. I absolutely love doing this and I do it for the people that also love it. I do it for the people that appreciate my work, that I am here every day after day, you know, doing something because I care 
about humanity, I care about society, and because I want to contribute. To me, this is a contribution, so it doesn't matter. If I make a difference to one person in the world, my job is done. My job is done. So, uh, the next thing that I could do is cumin. I love cumin, especially when you mix it, cumin with garlic and, and uh, boiled water, a little bit of lemon juice. So if you have any type of, of uh, if you can add like a cough, especially like a whooping cough or some kind of cough that you can't stop coughing, seriously, boiling water. You can have thyme, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of garlic, and lemon juice, and, and to make it go smooth, put a little bit of coconut oil, and that'll help you soothe. Okay, I tell you this because this is what I lived on when I was sick uh, in December. I had a really bad flu, you know, so I always cook for myself, no matter what, even if, if I'm, even if I'm tired, even if I'm sick, even if it's just berries that I cook because I need to drink some, you know, I take care of myself. I never take any pills, I never take any, any vitamins or minerals. All my vitamins and minerals come from the foods that I eat rather than getting them in a bottle. I don't believe in them, and so to each its own, right? So let's chop up the cilantro, and um, make sure you wash the cilantro really good. And I normally don't like to cut the ends. You can use this for juicing. It's just incredible as a juice or you can actually uh, use some mortar and then just chop it up really fine, put some lemongrass and put it on a dish. It's absolutely yummy, okay? So cilantro is probably one of my favorite herbs. I mean, I can just blend cilantro and, and tomatoes and drink it and put some chili. I have to have the chili. I don't know what it is, but uh, I... I have become quite accustomed, you know. I, I, it has saved my life so many times because I do, from time to time, get stressed out. And sometimes I get a major headache. So you know what I do for a headache? I take a little piece of cayenne pepper or, or about a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and I put it under my tongue. And believe me, the relief, especially if you, if you suffer from uh, migraine headaches, best thing ever. Really, the one thing that helped me a lot is just put a little bit of cayenne under the tongue and it just releases that tension from the back of your head. Okay? Um, I can put these uh, handles now because I need to hold on to it. So this is already nice and roasted. So uh, we're going to add some uh, tomatoes. So these are peeled tomatoes. And then just break them up in there. And by the way, I already have boiling water. Remember what I taught you before? Um, don't add cold water, you could, but it, it is my own secret that I found that for some reason the, the food cooks a lot faster when you add the boiling water instead of cold water. People always ask me, why do you always recommend uh, to put the, cold wa the hot water? Because I don't want cold water shocking my vegetables that I just heat it. It's like, I feel like it's like me, like I'm hot and then I gotta go with cold and it's like, oh. All right, anyway, let's put some turmeric. I cannot tell you enough on turmeric. Ayurvedic medicine has been proven. It's, it's a fact, scientifically tested, that turmeric is a natural anti-inflammatory. So for me, turmeric, unless, you know, I even put it on spaghetti sauce, put it that way. I love it so much. Uh, not because it tastes delicious, because honestly, it tastes like dirt. I grow it, uh, but I like it because of there are more pros than cons. So I love to have my turmeric um, on pretty much on every meal. So okay, so now we're just gonna turn it up a little bit. We gotta get some sea salt. Of course, we're gonna put a little bit of cinnamon. So, a lot of my food that I cook for myself, not necessarily for the this Happy Cooking Club, it's a lot of anti-inflammatory foods because I suffer of pain from head to toe in every part of my body. It feels like fibromyalgia. And you know, here I am still standing still because, like I said, I love to contribute. So I add a little bit of cinnamon, about a quarter of a teaspoon. That's great enough. Um, I also have 
I'm going to add some ginger. You can add fresh ginger, but if you don't have it, you know, improvise. And that's why when I don't have fresh ginger, I use like uh, ginger powder. Okay, I think I'm going to add a couple of bay leaves. This alone will be delicious with a little tortilla there. See, I'm a simple girl, even though, you know, some people might think I'm fancy, but honestly, I like simple cooking, simple everything. My life is absolutely simplicity. Okay, so now, let me turn this a little bit too low so I don't get burned. See, they interchange the handles. So turn it back up to medium. Have a fresh spoon for the naysayers out there. Every spoon, like after I'm done doing even this little bit, I'm still gonna have a lot of dishes to do, but don't worry, it's not gonna be as much as yesterday. I feel bad for the lady that comes and help me sometimes and clean the house. It's like whenever I cook and I do like a cooking class at Happy Cooking, it's like every counter is full of cookware. So anyway, so call me bad, but when I cook, I cook. And I, when I cook, I mean it. Okay, so this is the beluga, beluga uh, lentils that are already cooked. So that's why I roast my vegetables so I don't overcook the lentils. So now we add some uh, warm water. Simple, uh, simple, simple ingredients. And look at that, that's a beautiful soup, beautiful color. And uh, I have some tomato paste. Just to make it a little bit thicker, red. You can add a little bit of red wine if you want. These are many many things that you can do with it. So I'm gonna try it for salt because when you add water, you lose some of the, the flavors. And I'll get a spoon. By the way, remember I told you I have nothing but time. That's time. Always put time. Cannot be without the time. And I said I would try it for more for the for the salt salty flavor. Okay. Oh, it's perfect. Doesn't need anything. So now I'll just add my cilantro. And I'm going to show you how to make the cashew cream. So instead of sour cream, if you want to serve this with sour cream, it's delicious. But then I'm also going to show you for my friend Leonie that she told me that she was going to watch this video. Um, I'm going to show her how to make the cashew cheese. Like yesterday, I needed to finish all that cheese that I have in my house because I do really want to go on a plant-based uh, program. This is the perfect time since we have the time at home. It's probably gonna be good for people to cleanse, to cleanse, you know, parasites that probably they, they picked up, you know, from shaking hands, from picking up things. So it's a great time to consider doing a cleanse. I have a I have a 24 hour cleanse that gets rid of everything, believe me, but it is nasty. <laughs> it's disgusting, but I'll do it. So now to this precious soup, I turn it to medium, make sure that there is no food around the edges here, and then there's no food on the lid either that is very clean, otherwise it's not going to create that seal. I, did, I want this to, to uh, bring it to 185 degrees, which is high enough to kill the bacteria, low enough to preserve the vitamins and minerals. 
So, or uh, I always weigh the vapor valve activates at 185 degrees, but sometimes it's a fake click because the bottom is hot, but because I was roasting, my lid is not really hot, right? So it's not 360 degree um, even heat. It's only even heat all the way from tip to tip. So when I mean tip to tip, each piece of salad master is even heat from here to here. So a lot of the foods you can even cook without water. I, I've done like broccoli without water, but I always like to put a little bit of water because you know what? Sometimes I forget that I leave stuff on the stove. I'm sure you have too, right? Yes, me too. So anyway, for the cashew cream, very simple. Let's move these guys out of the way. You see how quickly I fill up with dishes? It's like they are attracted to me. But um, we can put this away. Oh, this goes right here. I have two. I love herbs, 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 herbs. And I don't like mixed herbs. I, I, if it's mixed herbs, I make it. But I like, you know, single herbs. And so I have all kinds of herbs and I'll just mix them up. Okay, for the cashew, let's, this is the cashews that have been soaked for two hours. If you can do it overnight, it's even better, okay? Because uh, it, it, they will be really plump and they're already absorbed a lot of the water, so it's a little bit more creamy, okay? my disappearing act today. So I needed a blender and the lid. And you're gonna need uh, a heavy duty blender if you can. So if you want the consistency of the cheese that I made last night, but that was really with cheddar cheese, I tried it, it was absolutely insane. It was delicious. But I don't eat cheese because I'm allergic to dairy. So whenever I feel like eating cheese, I either eat the European cheese, for some reason they make it a little bit different, organic American cheese, or I do my own cheese through almonds or cashews or whatever I can make it up. See the valve is clicking steady? All I'm gonna do is one, two, three, hot, I can't hold my finger there anymore, I turn it to low, and that's real. I cannot hold my finger there anymore. So, let's come to the uh, closer here. What you're gonna do with these cashews? You take a blender, make sure this is set there. And then, um, we're going to add the uh, clean water to the, to the cashew. So just empty it. And I now put fresh water. The reason why I do this and I don't do it in advance is so you can see it from start to finish. Uh, now we're gonna add some garlic. This is up to you. Um, you don't need to, but it'll also help you preserve this cheese in there. Okay, so one little clove is more than enough. Don't over, you know, we don't need to overburden the flavor of this delicious cheese already. But since it's a liquid cheese, you can do whatever you want with it. Make sure that you eat it within a couple of days no more than maybe three days, okay? So one garlic clove goes there. Um, we're gonna add some sea salt, a little bit, and then you can taste it later. I have something important. This is called brewer's yeast. So it gives it that kind of like cheesy flavor. You can also use lecithin. Oh, look at this, this is brand new. 
So let's add a tablespoon of the less uh, of the uh, brewer's yeast. For those people who are vegan, they should be eating the brewer's yeast and the lecithin. I'm sure that you vegan people that ask me for this recipe, you already know that. And of course, chipotle uh, pepper. You can use chipotle powder. As you can see in my home, one thing that we never lack is chipotle, uh, any type of peppers. I have all kinds of peppers. Even my friends bring me peppers from India, Sarita, who I love. She always bring me peppers and I love them. So, okay, so this is one whole chipotle pepper. It basically what chipotle pepper, in case you did not know, is a, um, a jalapeno that is being smoked. It's a smoked jalapeno and then it's put, you know, like it looks like it has a little bit of tomato paste. I mean, I didn't make this. This one, uh, I bought it. I mean, if I can smoke the jalapenos, believe me, what an experience that would be. Okay, so put the whole thing because it's only one, that's the last one. And uh, we got the salt, that's it, the brewer's yeast. Simple ingredients, and if you want it creamy, uh, put a little bit of uh, uh, coconut oil, coconut cream, not coconut cream, coconut, coconut butter. By the way, just to let you know, coconut, so people say, I can't find coconut oil. Well, coconut oil, coconut butter is the same thing. It's just in the summertime, the coconut, it will liquefy because it liquefies. That's why it's great in your body because it, 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 it makes you sweat, especially if you put it all over your skin. Uh, but in the, in the winter time, it's a solid. So it's just perfect, and the melting point is 96.8 degrees, so the same, kind of like the same temperature as your body. So that's why it's such a, I don't know, I love it. So I don't want to advertise because I don't sell coconut oil, but I just tell you, I love it. Uh, if you have the, the plunger, make sure that you put the plunger. I'm going to get it. And by the way, that's not the toilet plunger. This is the blender plunger. Looks like a blender, but it's not for the toilet. And this one, I'm doing it at high. blending make sure that you go on the sides like that so in that way you are you know scraping all the sides if you don't have this type of blender so put a little bit more water this is a commercial blender so it, it, it blends things super fast but also don't over blend because then you're gonna make it into a soup and then you have break you would have breaking all the rules when it comes to cooking okay um, so see this I'm gonna get a spoon so I can show you how beautiful. See the, um, I'm gonna move the soup here so you can see a little bit better. Mmm, wow. It looks incredible. See this? So that, my friends, is the liquid cheese. So you can serve this with your, with your, with chips instead of, uh, instead of cheese. Um, instead of making the cheddar cheese that I made yesterday, the nacho cheese. So this will be your nacho, nacho, nacho cheese. Now, the other thing that you can do, if you want to be able to, to make this into a into an actual cheese like a, that you can cut. Okay, let me tell you my secret. 
you get you get a little one quart like this and you boil a tablespoon of agar 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 so it's it basically agar comes from the sea it's a uh, it's one of those um what do they call them it's like an algae okay and it's in and, and, and it's clear a lot of the vietnamese and chinese it's it's been used for centuries okay but it's agar agar so it's a gelatinous so if you're vegan instead of using things that come like gelatin gelatin comes from the hooves of cows don't use that stuff you know the 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 the, the unflavored gelatin i can't remember i don't know if it's okay i'm not gonna advertise for whatever company but anyway if you're vegan, do not use the gelatin. You already know that that's, it comes from a cow. But if you are completely vegan and you want to make this cheese and you want to make like a little wheel of cheese, then you, you take approximately, oh, this is my oats from this morning. You take approximately a quarter cup of water, okay? So you blend this already. You have it blended, you have it ready. This is no time to mess around because this coagulates like this. So what you do is you, you boil about a quarter cup of water, take a tablespoon of the agar agar, and then just bring it to boil real quick, and then you bring the blender over here, you add it quickly, and then you, okay, you blend so the agar gets blended with, with your blend already, and very quickly you bring it back and put it into the one quart, let it cool off, and then put it in the fridge an hour or two hours later you can cut the cheese. I mean, I mean that you really slice the cheese, just like cheese, put it on a sandwich, put it on a toast, put it whatever, just eat it like that, no big deal. It's super delicious. So that was a tip for today, folks. Uh, I don't have any other today, it's not my marathon cooking. So yesterday was a challenge and believe me, I'm very proud of myself. And thank you so much for all of you that watched it. Thank you so much for, to all of you that share it. Thank you so much for the love that you've shown. And, and even the people that had negative comments, I don't mind, at least they made a comment. So, uh, but if you are going to leave a comment, be kind, leave a positive, a good comment, an inspirational comment. And thank you so much again, and God bless you. God bless us all. This is your flexitarian friend, Jael Canty. Until then, have a happy, healthy, and wealthy day. Ciao, love you all.